I feel I have not much to offer or nothing new to tell you which you do not already know because like Swami Vivekananda said that the entire knowledge is inside us. It is within us. So everybody is very knowledgeable these days. So I was a little confused, like what should I talk about? But I just wanted a general talk. Sometimes what happens, even if you are repeating yourself again and again, something which you already know, but at one time it starts making more sense, or one, once it hits you and you feel, okay, okay I will follow this. Like you tell, keep telling your child, uh, you are putting on weight, you reduce, reduce, reduce. Every day you are saying that, that person is not listening to you, your child is not listening to you. And one day he says, okay, I am on a diet. You have repeated it so many times. But that one day made a difference. So I thought, okay, okay maybe my one day will make a difference in your life. <laughs> so, I am uh, written it all by myself. It is like, you know something, I created a punch for you. Five things. The first and the most important thing is that we should all be very positive and very happy within ourselves. If we are happy, we make the other person happy. We make our family happy, we make the school happy, we make our colleagues happy, we make everybody happy. If we are unhappy, we see also an unhappiness around. We are happy, we see happiness around. So it is very important that every person, here I am talking to teachers, so I will say every teacher should be very, very positive and should come very happily from their homes. They should be very happy, they will be very passionate about for what they are coming to the school for. About their job. They should be very passionate about that. They should be happy to come to the school, spread happiness around. And then you know, colleagues. Sometimes what I have seen, a little bit of bickering. You know, if somebody is appreciated, the other person says, okay, okay, this one. So they will keep pulling that person's leg or something like that. Sometimes it happens. It should not. You, you, you should feel okay, something okay. I also try to reach up there. But not feel jealous. Be happy. And another thing very important I wanted to tell you was okay, look after your health. Mental and physical. Healthy eating. Healthy lifestyles. Exercise. Whatever time you go for walks, you know, it's very important to be healthy. I'll give you a very so small example here. Suppose I have a stomach ache. Will you still see me happy? So would I be bubbly? Would I be happy? No. I'll keep thinking about the stomach ache. So that means my health is very important for me. Every For everybody, you know, me thing, myself, is the most important thing in the world. And you have to look after yourself. When something happens to your body, it only you come to know. Even your life partner will not understand it that way. You will suffer. He cannot or she cannot suffer it for you. So, it's very important that you remain healthy and lead a healthy lifestyle. Be happy and spread happiness around. My second pointer was time management. Now, I have seen Indian housewives, they are very good time managers. They look after their children, their husbands, uh, you know, the food, the everything, then they are doing a job also. Ex 
simple. But we can further, you know, go into time management for your classroom teaching. When you're teaching in the class, period is for 40 minutes, 5 minutes devote to a recall. <coughs> Whatever has been taught a day prior, you just ask few students and you just find out, have they really understood what you taught them the day before? <coughs> then you, if they have it, repeat, uh, repeat it for at least 10 minutes. If they have, you move on to, to the lesson plan that day. And then five minutes before the bell rings, you <coughs> stop your lesson and give instructions to the um, students and just see that have they understood what you have taught. Usually what I have seen when I was in school, that till the bell rings, the teacher is still teaching. And sometimes what happened, suppose you are teaching a very important topic and the bell is rung, it is in between. You have wasted the time because now the connection will be lost and the next day again you have to start. Or you will haphazardly finish off the topic and you will leave because the bell has rung. For this and in every walk of life, because everything you can correlate it with your teaching. So this is very important, the time management. And I would like every, this is uh, like generally, Every person should be try to, we are all good human beings, you know, all good people. We can still become better. From today, we can still become better. We can always think, okay, what we did wrong, where was it wrong? Always try to find faults in yourself, not the other person. This is my catch. Because in life, you can improve yourself, you cannot improve the other person. That can be a family member, that can be a student, that can be a colleague of yours, your parents, your uh, children. Anyway, you cannot bring improvements there unless that particular person listens to you and decides on his own, okay, okay let me change. So the best method is that you bring that change in yourself. It will give so much of happiness for you. All your hindrance, all your problems, they will just vanish away if you follow this method. My third point was your subject knowledge. All of you, most of you, like in primary, they the teachers who are teaching all the subjects, otherwise you are all subject teachers. So, what I would wish is that all of you, I'm sure you're already doing it. I'm already telling you that these, these are nothing new, new things you're hearing. So subject knowledge should be enhanced every time. Sometimes what happens, suppose I did my MSc or my post-graduation about 20 years back or 10 years back or 15 years back. So my studies remained there. Then I got into teaching. That's it. <clears throat> no. It should not happen that way. Learn about more about your subject. Learn everything about your subject. And very especially the classes, this is for the senior uh, teachers. For the senior classes, you, uh, when you teach in the class, everything should be on your tips. Only then you will be comfortable. Otherwise you will keep fumbling. If you are not confident, you will keep fumbling. But if you have the full knowledge, confidence comes automatically then. 
then you're not looking for confidence. So be a learner. We always say teachers are learners. I get it from the papers also. That's, uh, we are all learners. We are. All teachers are learners. But are you actually learning? Are you actually devoting that time on your subject knowledge? It should be that. You will be more comfortable. You will be happier teaching when you know everything. You are not confident, you are underconfident or not very happy when you feel maybe I do not know this. A student might ask me something, I would not have an answer to it. So if you want to be happier, you want to be more confident, then your subject, you should be excellent in your subjects. Be a learner, keep studying, keep learning, keep reading, very important. My fourth point is the classroom teaching. As it is when we are talking to teachers, the classroom teaching, uh, teaching is on priority. It's very important how you conduct yourself as a teacher. You go to a class, first of all, I, uh, you should be very happy, very positive. And the students also will look at you that a very positive and a happy person in entering. They also will become radiant. They will also be happy to receive you and have it in your class. Whatever you teach in the class, make it interesting. How do you make it interesting? Correlate it with something. Your personal life, your something you have read. Like they said, the most famous thing is a book storytelling. Interactive methods. In, in senior classes, in junior classes, it is usually through storytelling. But in the senior classes, then if you want to make it interesting, it should be interactive. You introduce something, you tell them we will be doing this, this topic tomorrow. And then that's, ask the students, what are we studying today? Why is this important? What is it in that? You keep get, uh, getting answers. Then you keep uh, giving them. That way teaching is also taking place in an, an interactive way. And then you are correlating what you are teaching with any instance of your family, your family, uh, with something you happen in your life or something. A person, you know, keeps it permanently stored here. That person never forgets. These days, it's a time of computers and mobiles and it's a proven fact that to hold the attention of a student for it's not possible for more than three minutes my god so difficult for the teachers so quickly they shift their attention and uh, they cannot hold their interest you cannot hold their interest for more than three minutes that is a challenge for you all people and you have to overcome that challenge. Okay, how are you going to hold the interest of the students? That is your smartness. Only when you deal with something, you know, different. How, why, what. These are the catch words. For your teaching. Only when you are throwing this at them, that is the time the learning will take place. The attention will take place. They will pay attention to what, to what you are saying. <coughs> there are so many books also on how, what and why and all. And uh, make use of them. And uh, uh, you try to hold the interest of the students. Only then you will get good results because your you know work is now doubly difficult. 
Now coming to my last uh, point, we are such great people, all of you. You are the nation builders of tomorrow. You are preparing the students and building up a new nation. So much of responsibility is on your shoulders. So shoulder it well. Do your job well. Do the most that you can for the students. A teacher is a mother, a parent, a counsellor. He, he or she has so many other duties. You know, you very well know how the parents come. My child doesn't eat, man tell him to eat, tell him to drink milk. He doesn't play, tell him to play. So that means you're not only teaching. You're doing so many simultaneously, so many other duties also you have to perform. And never shirk from them. Don't say, no, I'm a teacher. Why should I bother about these things? No. These are all a part of good education, imparting good education to the students. And you should identify the students who need counselling. And even if like uh, during our childhood days, there were no separate counsellors. Uh, our own teacher used to be a counsellor. So, what I mean to say is, each one of you is a counsellor. And you see the students who has been very, uh, you know, good in studies, suddenly is not doing well. Try to find out his problem. A child is not, uh, not paying attention, inattentive. Try to find, uh, find out what is his problem. What we immediately do is scold the child. That is absolutely incorrect. He'll get inside the shell of it. There's no point. Or he'll become not here to irritate you. No. Be patient. With your new with the new session coming, you will need lot of patience. Lots and lots of patience. Because the children have been fed up sitting at home. Because the children are very energetic. They want to be up and about. They want to play. They want to interact. They want to have friends. They want to go to the school and do so many things. And they were all deprived. So this is another further challenge for me. So instead of getting irritated with them, welcome them with open arms you know, share things with them and be very patient. There will be some students who have nearly lost that one year with them. See what maximum you can do for them. Because there is a huge responsibility, I told you before, on your shoulders, you are building a nation. The future, all the um, if they are politicians, they are engineers, they are doctors and uh, everywhere where people are going, they are all students. So that is a huge responsibility. And you should have, since you are all teachers, we should all be very passionate about our job. Listen, nobody told you that uh, come and teach. You have all come on your own, no? So, you have decided to come and join the school. So, when you have come on your own, give your hundred percent to it. When, ten years back, when I was in the school, Palvi told me one day that, uh, ma'am, my passion is teaching and I am being paid for it. Imagine for the last 12 years I remember this. <laughs> and today where she is, she deserved it. <laughs> so I never forget.
forgot her sentence. This is how impressions are getting. There are some people who make such long lasting impressions on somebody. So I would like each one of you to make such an impression. To leave such impressions. And to do your best. Now coming, like what best we can do for the school. Lot of suggestions, lot of things, lot of things are being done in the school. You know what I was thinking was that uh, a word of mouth is the best way a person gets convinced. Suppose a friend of mine tells me Ki Usha, the, that doctor is very good. I said, oh, I'll tell two other friends, that doctor is very good. So if I have a problem or anybody has a problem, I straight away recommend that person. There are already so many doctors there. But I will take the name of that doctor. Because you are, you are convinced when somebody puts, on, puts in a, a word, na? so you feel, feel fully convinced. So what I suggest, what and what I, I'm, all, I'm very sure you're already doing it. What I feel is that each one of you are advertisement boards of the school. What you say if you say, I don't say okay, you should say okay, send your child to, to our school. Don't say that. If you just say that we have very good staff, very good management, very good facilities, and if you have that conviction in you, it comes on your face. And we have the best of everything. It's an excellent school. I'm proud to be associated with. One to another, two, third, fourth, see how the name of a school goes up. This is my suggestion to you. Thank you so much for the patient sharing. It was really lovely to talk to you. I hope I've not taken too much of time and bored you. <laughs> <laughs>